Hare Krishna. Today is August 1st, 2020, and we will be continuing the famous Mangalardi known as the Guru Ashtakam. And we are into the seventh verse. Today will be our third session on the same verse. But before I go into that, I was just wondering, yesterday was Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada Shubhautiti. And I was thinking maybe since we are glorifying the Acharyas uh, through Srila Vishwala Chakrati Thakur's uh, Guru Ashtakam, I thought maybe we can also share some wonderful glories of Rupa Goswami because he is indeed Shakshat Haritdena. Uh, as this seventh verse we are discussing, uh, he is different in terms of he's got the Haritva. The Vaishnava Acharya is just like the relationship is between the noun and the adjective. So Harit Sakshat Haritvena, Sakshat means the direct perception. And these Vaishnava Acharyas, when they appear, uh, either in person or through their uh, works or through their uh, uh, what do you call their their teachings uh, through the form of the different Vaishnava literatures? They are Sakshat. Uh, Sakshat, I, the other day we uh, explained that Sakshat means uh, Sa, Akshat, Iti Sakshat. Sa means all. All the uh, all the the, uh, the 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 Indris, Indriyas, or the senses. Uh, and Aksha, uh, Aksha means the senses and Sa means all, just like Sankirtan, Samyak Kirtan Iti Sankirtan. So Samyak Akshat Iti Sakshat. So we can actually perceive, and it is a Kripalila, of, one of the Kripalilas of Krishna, that he sends his bona fide representatives uh, to, for the upliftment of mankind, for and to give them the highest of the highest, especially those Vaishnava Acharyas who come in the Brahma Madhu Gauriya Sampradaya line, they are they are very strict followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and have understood the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I would like to dedicate maybe a part of this program to Srila Rupa Goswami um, being one of the foremost leaders. Sri Chaitanya Mano Abhishtam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam. This is the famous Pranam Mantra of uh, Rupa Goswami. Pranam Mantras are those mantras that, in a very, very small or in a very few words, uh, glorify the personality uh, that highlights all the important qualities of that personality, the transcendental qualities. And as this mantra of Rupa Goswami says that Sri Chaitanya Mano Abhishtam, it is so much connected to today's verse in the Samsara Davanal prayers of Shakshad Haritvena because Chait Sri Rupa Goswami has understood the Mano Abhishtam. He has understood the core of the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mano Abhishtam Stapitam Jena Bhutale. And he uh, Rupa Goswami established those principles of pure bhakti as per the desire of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Very, very important. As this very first few words in his Pranam Mantra indicate, Sri Chaitanya Mano Abhishtam Sthapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahiyam. When will this Rupa Goswami himself, the Dati, uh, will, will accept me? Uh, at his lotus feet. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam When will he accept me? When will I be able to take shelter at his lotus feet? But it has to be noted that Srila Prabhupada um, he actually was uh, an amazing personality who when he was in Sri Vrindavan Dham he was at the lotus feet constantly of Rupa Goswami. Because Rupa Goswami's Samadhi is in the Radha Damodar temple in Seva Kunja. 
and Shiraf Rubad's was very, his room was very close, barely a few feet away from Srila Rupa Goswami's Samadhi. Sometimes it is said that Srila Prabhupada would wake up at night, in the middle of the night, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and somebody, the one of the head uh, uh, pujaris at that time used to recollect, and he said that somebody used to sweep the floor in front of Rupa Goswami's Samadhi, and he would wail, he would cry, hey Rupa, Hey Rupa, hey Rupa, and when he saw, when he was going out for the call of nature, he saw it was it was Swami Maharaj, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, who was sweeping the floor, just like Shamanand Pandit or Dukhi Krishna Das was sweeping not too far from there in Seva Kunj is the Sthali, Rasa Sthali of Radha Krishna, where uh, Dukhi Krishna Das found the Nupur or the ankle bracelet of Radharani. And, and every day his seva was also to sweep those grounds of the Ras Leela. So in a similar fashion, we can say that such wonderful menial services were performed by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada's success is not some surprise uh, if we understand his, his life and his teachings is all based on, Shri, on Srila Rupa Goswami, uh, who has understood the core of the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And therefore, in the very first verse as well, it is described in the in this uh, Guruvashtakam that Praptasya Kalyana Gunarnavasya Vande Guru Shri Charnaravindam. So these Acharyas have obtained Praptasya Kalyana, the most auspiciousness, uh, Gunarnavasya, Guna, the transcendental qualities, Arnava means an ocean. So they have obtained this, these transcendental ocean or the ocean of transcendental qualities from the Guru Parampara. So Srila Prabhupada actually obtained that special mercy from Rupa Goswami, from Jiva Goswami, from Krishnaraj Kaviraj Goswami, from Srila Bhugarma Goswami. And so many great personalities are there in Samadhi. Their Samadhi is in Seva Kunja. And of course, the deities themselves, Radha Damodar, deity, and, and 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 so many other wonderful uh, deities are there in the in in Seva Kunj. So Srila Prabhupada obtained that that special mercy, and that's how he was able to uh, uh, be the the leader of the Sankirtan band of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prithvi Nagaradi Gram Sarvatrohi Bimor Nam Prachar. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had predicted, and Mahaprabhu could have easily given that opportunity to any other devotee, but because uh, A.C. Bhaktivinoda Swami Shri Prabhupada was so dedicated, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu choose, chose him to be his leader of the Sankirtan band that spread the holy name. Because, and all was there because he had obtained the mercy of all our uh, Vaishnava Acharyas. So much love. So this is a very important thing that I personally try to apply in my life, that we should have lots and lots of love for our Vaishnava Acharyas. No matter how fallen we may be, no matter how much we may be uh, or we are in Maya, but if we show love towards their lotus feet, uh, then somehow or the other by their mercy we will be saved. And not only saved, we will probably be made instruments to save others as well as per the wish of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is so beautiful. Rupa Goswami is the life of the Gaudi Vaishnavas. He's the crest jewel, uh, Mukuta Shiromani, uh, of the Rasik Bhaktas. So Rupa Goswami is known as the, Rupa and Sanatan Goswamis are known as the Rasik Acharyas. Jiva Goswami is Rasik Acharya as well as Tattva Acharya. And it is said that Srila Prabhupada was so fortunate that he got both. He got the rasik and the uh, and the and the tattva from Jiva Goswami. Uh, as a matter of fact, he is so much similar to everything Jiva Goswami stood for. The Jiva Goswami shada sandarbhas are all about philosophy, all about the jiva, the the jiva sandarbha, the paramatma sandarbha, Krishna sandarbha. So all very very nicely philosophically explained. And Prabhupada gave this on a platter to all of us. And and we need to really take it step further by actually not only absorbing into the philosophy, but also trying to dive deeper into the mellows or rasa, which at some point 
will will uh, that when that maturity in bhakti comes then 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 that will make that will please our acharyas because just by staying in the 10th grade or 12th grade that is not sufficient our parents or our grandparents will be very happy and so will our spiritual grandfathers will be very happy if we are going to uh, graduate and 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 keep graduating to newer levels uh, and and enter into the the raganuga bhakti so not only by performing our our sadhana bhakti nicely but staying at that level and staying at the kanishta kanishta level is is uh, is not so so uh, wonderful because i've seen that for the last 30 years 35 40 years so many devotees not to kind of uh, uh, criticize or anything but it's just an observation that it is more or less like a boat that uh, the anchor has been uh, drawn and the boat no matter how much you row meaning that rowing of the boat is like chanting and doing kirtan and and participating in all different festivals and programs but why is there no progress why we do not have the attachment to the lotus feet of the acharyas this is not so good because i have seen in, even in our great movement that shri prabhupad uh, he wanted this to to explode it was called the hare krishna explosion and that explosion just not meant by the number of people joining it is also the explosion of the quality of the heart and the consciousness of the heart hmm this is a very very uh, personal realization that i'm sharing with with uh, with all of you here because until and unless we develop that taste to have that attachment of the lotus feet of his gaudiya vaishnava who are none other than the the uh, very dear uh, servants the 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 kingaris the manjaris of radharani how can we really get the grace of krishna or the grace of radharani it will be very difficult to enter into the internal pastimes of radha and krishna that are so secretive in the kunjas so if we want to enter that into that nikunja seva then we need to be very much uh, begging for their mercy we have seen that on the appearances the tirobhav and the abhirbhav of other acharyas the said shri prabhupad uh, most of our temples are vacant on those days even extending it to the immediate acharya after shri prabhupad bhakti siddhan saraswati thakur it is so painful that the temples don't conduct any programs uh, or they do not con conduct the 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 requisite <coughs> the <coughs> excuse me the the minimum requisite pushpanjali and the glorification very few temples are doing it these days so and then forget about uh, about uh, shri ra gaur kishor das ji maharaj or or shri la bhakti vinod thakur and the other acharyas uh, nobody is doing that and unless and until we all we say we all love prabhupad but and if we love prabhupad then we have to love prabhupad's family too it's so important prabhupad used to say this very very often that if you love me then you have to love my dog also ha huh? like so the thing is that what to talk about this these reverential personalities that prabhupad himself is 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 so much grateful to then if we do not show the proper respect or rather more than respect we have to have that internal love for them develop it and we can only develop the love if we study their writings yeah, and 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 most of them are very simple in the form of bhajans and and poetry that are meant for in, in a very simple way for the common person so we are not doing that you know vaishnava bhajans is the gaudiya vaishnava bhajans is the key to pure bhakti even if we don't study the deeper uh shastra in terms of of uh, memorizing the shlokas etc as long as we understand the essence of pure bhakti then you know we are good because then everything else will be manifest in our hearts <clears throat> we do not need not become scholarly that is not our goal the gopis and the manjaris were not scholarly uh, there were their purity lied lied in the the purity was in the in their hearts for the love of radha and krishna for the love of shri radha for the service of shri radha and and that itself is an, is the highest qualification so rupak swami uh, being the rasik bhakta rasik shiromani and 
he alone he fulfills the mano of ishtam uh, the heartfelt desire of chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, we have performed our worship of shri rupa goswami and we pray to his lotus feet that his conceptions may manifest in our heart uh, very very important the essence of what he has teach anya abhilashita shunya gyan karma navrutam anukulena krishna anushinanam tat bhakti ruttam this is the essence of Chet, of of uh, of uh, uh, swami in his wonderful book bhakti rasam sindhu that we should not have any anya bilashita any other material desires including for gyan and karma a lot of people the mayavadis the brahmavadis those who study the vedas and uh, from a scholarly perspective those dry mundane philosophers uh, they are too much into this uh, grammar and sanskrit and so many other uh, scholarly components of the of the vedas and shastras so there shrupa goswami says that not even gyan uh uh-uh, gyan and even karma a lot of them they stress so much most of the the so called sadhus even in india they and and, and most most pious people in india they talk about do your duty work is worship karma you know they talk about karma so rupa goswami is rejecting that gyan and karma anavrutam it should be beyond gyan and karma and then then what is our then our duty or what is what should be our activity anukulena krishna anushilanam uh, what pleases krishna that is pure bhakti yeah, that bhakti is known as pure bhakti because even in in the bhagavad gita krishna has explained gyan yog dhyan yog yeah, karma yog but but uh, krishna explained them just like a child is being explained by a loving parent or somebody who doesn't understand that oh beta you know if you don't do your homework then it will be a bad thing for you it is your duty to do your homework because then you will get good marks if you get good marks then you will be successful in your graduation in, in you will get admission to a better school or a college and then if you get better school and college admission then you will get better job or you will be successful in business so like that krishna is also similarly gradually explaining arjun who appears to be ignorant obviously arjun cannot be ignorant he is a parshad of krishna but because of yog maya uh, for our sake those question answer session in the bhagavad gita takes place between arjun and krishna and krishna is starting from the basics about karma yoga and then gyan yoga and then he's talking about bhakti yoga and then from on the standpoint of bhakti yoga arjun picks up the bow and arrow which he initially drops in the beginning saying that i cannot do this battle i cannot i cannot ensure this fighting i don't want it uh, but then he fights due to bhakti because it was krishna's desire not out of karma yoga that he is a kshatriya not that he is he is fighting out of gyan krishna gave so much knowledge and then on based on that knowledge he picked up the bow and arrow no he did anukulena krishna anushilanam he did what krishna wanted him to do that would please krishna that is why nashtamo smriti labdha tvat prasadat maya chuta gata sandeha stito asmi karishya vachanam tava i will do exactly at this as you say krishna my my uh, intelligence has been re established by your mercy o krishna because you spoke this bhagavad gita and i will do whatever you want me to that is anukulena krishna that is uttam bhakti so arjun did not fight because of karma yoga na 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 most people are of that misconception it is to please krishna he fight he fought he did not even have worry that even if he fights and if he kills so many including his own kinsmen and his own gurus like dronacharya kripacharya etc that he may be subject to uh, the uh, onslaught of uh, sinful activity of of guru hatya he did not even mind that that even if he went to hell no i have no problems but at least it will please krishna that is anukulena krishna anushilanam that is shuddha bhakti that is the difference between the queens of dwarka and there is a clear difference between the gopis which narad ji established in our jagannath rath yatra katha we mentioned uh, all those important points although the queens of 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 dwarka they are in madhurya rasa but the madhurya rasa of the gopis of vrindavan is a far super excellent nature when one time 
Narad Ji visited Dwarka. Krishna want, wanted to display the pure devotion and the bhakti uh, of the gopis in Vrindavan. So he uh, uh, <coughs> felt sick, like he had a very bad pain in his stomach. And, and he was like really, really writhing in pain. And all the queens in Dwarka started worrying about Krishna. Oh, Krishna, what can we do? And they brought the best Kaviraj, the doctors, and they checked him and they gave him medicines, but that did not work. And then when Naraji arrived, all the, the queens of Dwarka were worried. And they said, Naraji, maybe you can suggest something. You know, we are worried about his health. So then Naraji said that, you know what? Let us ask him because he is the Supreme Lord. He himself can give a solution for what the mitigation of his pain. So then, of course, Krishna had actually brought Naraji there due to, to perform or prove a certain point to, uh, to perform a particular Leela. So then he said, Naraji, the best way I think is let all the devotees, including my queens in Dwarka or the Dwarkavasis, give me the dust of their feet and I will mix it in water and I will take that as medicine and I'm sure my pain will be gone. So then Naraji said, what's the big deal? So he approached Rukmini, Satyavama, Jamvati, all the queens looking at them and all of the queens backed up. Are you, Naraji, what, you are, what are you saying? That the, Krishna is my Swami. You know, we are supposed to take the, the dust of his feet, not the other way around. We will go to hell. We will burn in hell for eternity for doing such a thing. So nobody came forward in Dwarka to give the the dust. So then Krishna said, Narad, go to Vrindavan. Why don't you go try there? So Naraji went to Vrindavan. And as soon as Naraji came, all the gopis and the gopas and all of them gathered around him because whenever Naraji goes, there is some news about Krishna. They were very excited. And they asked, first question, how is our Krishna Naraji? I'm sure you must have seen him. So Naraji said, mm, not so good. And just by hearing that, you know, a lot of the, the, the Rajvasis fainted just by hearing those news that Krishna is not well. Some of the other they were revived back to consciousness. And then they asked what happened, Naraji. And Naraji said that he has a terrible stomach ache and uh, none of the medicines work. They said, oh, there are big, big doctors in Dwarka. I'm sure, you know, uh, they should have been able to do something. Naraji said, uh-uh, no, nothing could be done. And uh, <clears throat> So they said then Krishna suggested uh, his own medicine. So yes, yes, please tell us what did he suggest? So he suggested that the devotees can give uh, me the dust of their feet and he can mix it in water and he can drink it and that will mitigate his pain. So the, the gopis said that nobody gave that in Dwarka. No, 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 nobody. They were all afraid of going to hell. And the gopis were so innocent. They started scraping their feet. Their, Lotus feet and started gathering their dust in their achal and said, take Naraji, take this and please take it for our kana, you know, and make sure that he, he takes it as per his desire and his, it will be mitigated, his pain. So Naraji, as the gopis were giving the dust, Naraji says, you're not afraid of going to hell. He is Akhila Brahmandapati. He is the, the Akhila Brahmanda Nayaka. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Aren't you afraid? So the gopis said, Naraji, if it can mitigate Krishna's pain, we are willing to go to hell for eternity. No issues. Take it, please. So this is what the pure bhakti of Rajas. <clears throat> so similarly, the uh, uh, Krishna's uh, whatever is anukul to Krishna, whatever is is making Krishna Radha and Krishna happy, is pure uttam bhakti, which Rupa Goswami. Uh, taught that was the essential the most important philosophy of all philosophies is anya bilashita shunya jnana karma navratam anukulyana krishna anushinanam tad bhaktir uttam so so this is what he he was teaching if Sri rupa goswami had not come to this world the flood of of mercy that was created by chaitanya mahaprabhu the gift of the service of shri radhika would have stopped. And when the Lord disappeared, Sri Krishna came to this world as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for two reasons. Uh, the first reason was to fulfill his unfulfilled desires 
the second reason was to distribute the world uh, the ragamarga or the ragatmika bhakti of spontaneous devotion by following and in the footsteps of the vrajvasis by the following in the footsteps of the associates of radharani and especially to distribute the seva of shri radhika very very important this is what what chaitanya mahaprabhu's internal desire was uh, and i'm giving you the essence so for this purpose mahaprabhu manifested himself in the heart of sri rupa goswami sri chaitanya mano avishtam and inspired him to write all his transcendental literatures especially the madhav and uh, these are all natak the they were plays and later on ujwal and nilamani bhakti rasam sindhu we should you know again with some rasik devotees who have real taste study these books uh, not with everybody this is not meant for everyone unless and until one develops a taste for rasa then there is no point in broadcasting such literatures to them otherwise it's like um, like you know sometimes wasting time uh, valuable time either they will not relish like we see that this topic you know that we are samsara davanal we are taking it to you know deeper levels but not many people are attending because you know their, their taste is perhaps not developed uh, and, and rightfully so krishna and radha have the right to reserve their their eternal pastimes or the nikunja seva to very few people uh, it's not meant and therefore but the bhagavad gita is meant for everyone but shrimad bhagavatam chaitanya charitamrita and all these rasik literatures like mentioned vigdha madhav or ujwal nilamani bhakti rasam sindhu or the acharyas like the uh, gopal champu of jiva goswami or the uh, krishnadas gaviraj goswami's govinda lila amrit or the uh, <clears throat> mukta charita all these wonderful rasik literatures are are really for those who have developed a taste unless and until one develops a taste then um, it will either become very boring or they will not understand it and then slowly you know they will drop out so uh, that is why you know i am actually continuing this sessions because of you know even if i have one devotee who is interested then that gives me a lot of inspiration and a lot of pleasure because here's the opportunity to to speak about about the 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 deep uh, loving exchanges of the acharyas and the and their activities and and the inner core of their hearts so sometime after shri chaitanya mahaprabhu departed from this world people uh, they they actually did not understand the parkiras uh, the you, you all understand what parkiras is right that jay jay ujwala rasa sarva rasa sar parkiya bhave jaha vrajeta prachar so this is very very high parkiya ras means the 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 transcendental rasa of love uh, besides the love that they have the gopis of their own husbands so parkiya as the word indicates so this can be very very badly misunderstood and it is in the normally in our social etiquette that is considered very bad and unchaste to uh to you know like even think of somebody else for a wife to think of somebody else besides their husband so uh, so this was something that uh, would uh, so chaitanya mahaprabhu after he departed uh, people who could not understand parkiras they started hating it and that sahajism started which i had explained a little bit earlier while we we were waiting for the program to start to prabhu ji that why we should not follow in the footsteps of the sahajas and even we have to sing the mahamantra and all other bhajans that are approved by chaitanya mahaprabhu in the gaudi of vaishnavas gauravita kirtana suri suni rit anande ridana nache bhakti no thakur in one of his bhajans he says that shuddh bhakat karan renu bhajane anukula and in that he says that gauravita kirtana suni i will listen only to those kirtan gaur bihita bihita means those that are approved by chaitanya mahaprabhu kirtan suni and by listening to such pure kirtans anand ride nache not kirtans that are being manufactured uh, like hare krishna hare ram uh, jai uh, bhajarada govinda all these kinds of 
kirtans are not approved. Prabhupada was strictly against them. And he had stopped devotees from singing those uh, for their own benefit. And these were all manufactured in Bengal uh, by those Sahajyas. They also believe to, to a certain extent in Mahaprabhu, Nityanand Prabhu, some of them are Apasampradayas. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur was deadly against them, like Aul, Baul, uh, 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 Shankar, uh, Chudadhar, Shankar Chudadhar, and there are a bunch of them. I forget all the names. There are about 12 Apasampradayas. And they all believe in Gornitai. And they sing the glories of Gornitai. And then they behave in such a way that they are into Parki Arasa. Sometimes their gurus or some of the leaders, they even have some affairs with their own disciples. or And, and they try to imitate uh, the behavior of Krishna in Vrindavan. And that is very abominable. Thinking some of them, they try to dress up like gopis in, in saris. And then they uh, are uh, sometimes, you know, having some bhog, uh, physical union with their, with their leaders who take advantage. And that is total sahajism. Sahajism in a very simple way means to take this Krishna consciousness or this Gaudiya Vaishnava bhav or the bhav of Radha and Krishna, especially the Madhuri Ras, very lightly, very casually, and to imitate it especially. Nowhere in the books of Rupa Goswami or our Acharyas, that kind of imitation is recommended. As a matter of fact, until the end of our last breath, even after uh, reaching the Raganuga Bhakti, there is still that sadhana bhakti is always, always a part along with the Raganuga Bhakti that keeps us in check, that keeps us from imitation. The surges, they sing the glories of Radha Krishna and they manufacture all these different lyrics and bhajans and bhaja gora nitai and all that. That is not recommended. So some people don't recognize. They come to Vrindavan and they listen to those Sahaja people speaking. Even some of them uh, are, are at this adulterated that Nityananda Parivar that, that has emanated from the pure line of Nityananda Prabhu. But due to adulteration, senses are so strong. If we don't follow exactly, if we don't become Rupanugas, then we will become the victims of Maya. Even at those stages, uh, there are so many good speakers who speak, but that is why we have to only strictly hear on, in the line of Rupa Goswami. So we have to be very careful whom we, uh, whom we hear, even Harikatha, they even wear the Gaudiya version of Tilak, but not all of them who wear that Tilak are actually true Gaudiya Vaishnavas or true Rupanugas. So this is a very, very important thing. If we don't understand the Tattva, we'll get mixed up. And then we will even start criticizing our own Sampradaya. And we will think that, oh, this is nicer. And oh, what Rupa Goswami has given is so-so. The moment that thought comes, we are finished. We are completely, we will be bereft of any kind of mercy. And then Krishna will reserve the right to give us that information, that, that deep information that is there. So this is very, very important, you know, being his, his Tirobhav Titi. I thought that, you know, I could touch some of, some of the subjects. Uh, they, these people, after Mahaprabhu leaving, they were confused and they had a bad idea about it. Even other sampradayas like the Sri Sampradaya of Ramanujacharya and also the Nimbark Sampradaya were against the worship of Radha Krishna to such a degree that they separated the deity of Radha from the deity of Govinda in Jaipur. So they made it separate. And, 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 and we are in the Sampradaya that we want the reunion of Radha Krishna. That is the Manjari Bhav. So that they do not understand. So Rupa Goswami established the true conception of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Some of them, they think that Mirabai is the highest conception. Yes, she is a wonderful devotee. Of course, Krishna came and even took the glass of poison for her. And she, she was a, 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 a true devotee uh, amongst the millions of devotees of Krishna. But there is no comparison to the devotees who are in the Gaudiya line. And therefore, she is not accepted as the highest example of bhakti. And we do not even sing her bhajans. And they may be fine, they are nice, no doubt. I'm not trying to criticize Mirabai. That is not my goal. 
what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to differentiate. It's like when I give the example of the queens of Dwarka and I give the example of what Naraji and Krishna had enacted and he and, 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 the, and the gopis of Vrindavan, there is a distinction. That doesn't mean that the queens of Dwarka are bad. It only highlights that the Vraj Bhakti is of the highest uh, nature. And those who are in competition of Sri Radha, huh, then there is a problem in the Gaudiya Vaishnava principle. The, the, we do not even uh, approve that. Like for example, there is a wonderful little pastime in, in Radha Kund, Shura Raghunath Das Goswami, uh, one of the six Goswamis of, Shri, of, of Vrindavan, the famous ones, who, like Raghunath Das Goswami was one of the six of them, like Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, uh, Das Gosai, he's known as Raghunath Das Goswami, whose disciple is Shri Krishnath Kavirat Goswami, who wrote the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And his, uh, you all know very well, and I've taken darshan right on the banks of Radha Kund, his uh, samadhi is there, he's eternally present there. Raghunath Das Goswami. So Raghunath Das Goswami was completely absorbed in bhajan there and he was so much in renunciation that it was of a very, very high nature that he hardly used to take any food. He used to just drink some chas, some buttermilk, you know, little bit a day and that was all. And most of the time, about 18, 19, 20 hours, he used to chant the holy name. And some, and, and a lot of the time he used to write and meditate and on the banks of Radha Kun, <clears throat> on the amorous pastimes of Radha Krishna. So uh, one time, one devotee came and uh, gave some chas in a big uh, leaf cup, like a dona, what we call. You know, even today, if you go to Vrindavan or the villages, we find that we have the patal or the plate made of leaves. And there is the, also the bowl that is also woven and made out of out of leaves uh, from the dry leaves. So when um, uh, Raghunath Das Goswami saw the charge, you know, and he was about to take it and he took the patal in his hand, the, the, the bowl, he immediately threw it away with a lot of <clears throat> uh, transcendental anger, stating that, uh, where did you get this from? And he kind of admonished and chastised that devotee this doesn't look from around here. This, this patta or this leaf looks from the kunja of Chandravali. Now, Chandravali is one of the competing gopis. Uh, Radharani is in the uh, uh, Bamya bhav. And uh, Chandravali is in the Dakshin bhav. Uh, Radharani is in the leftist mood. And Chandravali is in the rightist mood. So it's a different conception. And uh, because uh, Chandra Ali kind of, you know, it's a transcendental Leela that keeps away Krishna from Radharani. So similarly, any competition with Sri Radha, none of, of the Manjiris, none of our Acharyas will approve because solely they are Radha Dasyam. That is their life and soul. Radharani, if Radharani is happy, they are happy. If Krishna makes Radharani unhappy, Krishna is also, you know, not liked by those Manjiris, at least temporarily. And sometimes the manjaris and the gopis combined, they really give a harsh treatment to Krishna for not making Radharani happy by either being late in their rendezvous, in their meeting, in the kunjas, etc. So this is a very important principle that Mirabai was also there in Vrindavan, but her bhava was to take Krishna away from, Radha, from Radharani. Uh, although even in the, within the gopis of Vrindavan, Chandravali and all the other rightness mood gopis at the end of the day they have this bhav that they know that radharani is the patrani in vrindavan she is vrindavan eshwari and even in the maharas when that happens when all the gopis from all the youths from all the groups when they come they know that radharani is the center so the maharas includes all those gopis including from the other the leftist and the rightist groups but they, at the end of the day even chandravali acknowledges Radharani's position. So nowhere in Mira's bhajans we find that. Uh, these are all very deep things because it is not so easy for other people to understand. I used to be personally attracted with Mira bhajans a while ago. But as I started contemplating and reading on these Acharya's true and pure teachings of the Gaudiya Bhav, then I personally stopped. You know, and I do not relish them anymore, honestly speaking. 
because the, the point is that actually that is not uh, the goal of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. So we have to be very, uh, very, very uh, one pointed. Krishna even says in the Bhagavad Gita that uh, if one is multi branched, if the one's intellect, intelligence, or activities, or even bhakti, if it is multi branched, samadhauna vidyate. This is a wonderful verse in the Bhagavad Gita that applies at all levels. It can apply to the basic devotee who may be devoted to all different demigods to worship, like you know, somebody is worshipping Ganesh ji, or somebody is worshipping Shiv ji, or Durga ji, and all the other Ananya Devi Devutas, and considering them on the same level as Krishna. Then Krishna says that, that ones whose intelligence is multi branch samadhana vidyate neither you will understand the those devi devtas because to understand those devi devtas then at the end they will understand that those devi devtas themselves are brithya akla ishwara krishna or shab brithya uh, uh, krishna is the only supreme lord and all of them are servants so if one even is a true devotee of lord shiva or any other any other demigod or devi devta then their intelligence one way will be dovetail towards the lotus feet of Krishna. And that has seen in history that a lot of devotees who prayed to the demigods very sincerely, the demigods other Devi Devtas gave them very special benedictions to become and remove obstacles and, and gave them Krishna Bhakti. So even if one prays to any of the demigods, you know, even if as being Krishna devotees, one can always pray to them that please, you know, uh, if please, you know, remove any obstacles. I am subject to the rules of Maya in this material world. And you are the Adhistati Devi and Devtas who can remove these obstacles. So I request you that so that my consciousness can mature and please give me your blessings, O Ganesh Ji or Devi Ma or Shiv Ji, etc. So that those who you worship, those from where you receive your power, he will be pleased by me. So that is the true intelligence. And the higher meaning of this verse the, that in the Bhagavad Gita, there are there's a lot of rasic meanings of verses in Bhagavad Gita. Unless and until we are mature enough in rasa, we will not be able to see through those verses in the Bhagavad Gita. The same verse can be applied to Krishna himself. There are many types of Krishna. There is Vasudev Krishna, and there are many different types of, of the avatars of Krishna, like Vishnu, Narayan, Adi, different avatars. So if one's mind is, is absorbed in, let's say, the different avatars of Krishna, then we cannot, like, if we are worshipping even Lord Ramachandra, we are even worshipping Lord Narsingadev, we are worshipping Vamandev, we are worshipping Narayana, Lakshmi Narayana, etc., then Samadhauna Vidyate. We will not be able to attain perfection in any one of those rasas, neither in Dasya Rasa Sakya or in, in uh, Vatsalya or Madhuri Rasa. So, our school of thought, which is considered the topmost because of Rupa Goswami and, his, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's followers is the Madhurya Rasa, uh, the Krishna Prem in that Rasa, not the Dwarka Rasa, not the Mathura Rasa. It's the pure Raj Rasa. So this is the, the important point that I'm trying to make, that Samadhav Navidyate, that we will not be. I have seen so many devotees. I Actually, they are my good friends. They are also initiated by the same spiritual master. All these years, at least I've known them for 28, 30 years in Chicago. And immediately I see, and so many times when I have a personal conversation with them, I tell them, Prabhuji, why you are running around every Saturday to do Kirtan in some, uh, what do you call, uh, Sundarkan part? They are going to all these different temples, Hindu temples, and they're going to the Sundarkan part or Mataki Choki, and then so one of the devotees told me, Are Prabhuji, I'm getting the chance to do Mahamantra Kirtan. That is why I'm going and I'm giving Mahamantra Kirtan of Prabhupada to everyone. And in my mind, I'm saying nonsense. You know, you're doing this for your own pratishtha. You know, because you don't know the philosophy. Last 25, 28 years, I'm seeing you. But, you know, it is like an anchor dropped in the, uh, in the boat. You know, even on, on the initiation day, this person, Maharaj, asked him, Can you tell me the four regulative principles? And tell me. He could not even speak one of them. Maharaj almost stopped the initiation and says that I cannot initiate you. So a couple of devotees being kind, they said, no, he's doing good seva in the temple, this, that. 
maybe he just could not you know speak during the initiation he is so nervous but my interaction being with all these devotees they have been so not attached to mahaprabhu's lotus feet not attached to shri prabhu's lotus feet it has become just a convenience of coming to the iskon temple every sunday or on festivals and just uh, being a part of the congregation you know so the thing is that there are a lot of devotees like that so that that main fundamentals are not very crystal clear this is very very unfortunate and and then that is the reason why uh, we have to hear from from senior devotees and rasik vaishnavas to instigate that inner core of our heart to understand rupa goswami so rupa goswami he established all these conceptions uh, of 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 your bhakti of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu by his books he especially used even shrimad bhagavatam as evidence to establish the parkiras uh is is to establish that parkiras is not only bona fide but it is the highest devotion so and and he has written uh sanatan goswami also the brihad bhagavat amrit lagu bhagavat amrit commentaries on the shrimad bhagavatam so he has established this truth uh, in a such a strong way that all of the sampradayas had to bow down their heads and accept it can you imagine even ramanujacharya who is such a great he is actually uh the the none other than pankarshan himself but in leela form he could not even accept and they separated radha krishna so even in jagannath puri the, you know the, most of them cannot accept lord jagannath as the virjendra nandan krishna uh, they see him as the vaikuntha adipati that is their vision now uh, all these sankracharya devotees come even today during the rath yatra they always call the present sankracharya who to do the inauguration he comes he gar- he puts the garlands and he is given the opportunity to go on the rath before the rath yatra starts because it is a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, it is an ancient ancient uh, tradition to have the the mayavadi sankracharya the followers Uh, even sankracharya pad himself used to come to puri during those times but their vision was completely separate so mahaprabhu's vision and we explained that in detail why do you think it took us six sessions to explain the rath yatra ah, we we were blessed with this with this understanding that i am able to share in depth with the devotees even i have uh, honestly speaking i have only gathered one small drop of this true nectar but some of the other that mercy has flowed and perhaps as I, i seek the blessings in the future that i can dive more deeper into the acharya's books and 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 you know uh, it, it gets so absorbed in that rasa in the true bhakti uh, that will really be very beneficial not only to myself to all that i i i, I when the opportunity arises to share what would have happened if rupa goswami had not appeared in this world the vraj prem ha ah. the prem of dasya sakya vatsal and especially the prem of the gopis was contained in a storehouse chaitanya mahaprabhu's heart and there are so many types of gopi bhav namely sneha mana pranaya rag anurag bhav and mahabhav so see these all these definitions we don't speak about them we don't even understand what they are honestly we have to we when we read the acharya's books we got that were given by rupa goswami pad because we always talk about even in iskon we say that oh what is the highest goal of life so immediately any devotee will say krishna prem ah but there are so many delineations of krishna prem and actually none of them or hardly very very minuscule percentage know that our acharyas shila prabhupad and the entire acharya group ah the praptasya kalyana gunarna vasya the entire parampara is is mainly radha dasyam that obviously involves krishna service also but radha dasyam that is that is the uh, the bhav bhakti you know thakur has written in bhajan lal sa so many different bhajans it is revealed narottam das thakur himself has revealed that radha dasyam that that is the the most important one of the things that i had not mentioned in the rath yatra um part is because there were so many other devotees talking about radha dasyam um uh, when we talked about kurukshetra uh, and how the uh, 
Dwarkadesh Krishna and uh, Baldev Ji and Subhadra Devi and all the different Dwarkavasis, including Mother Kunti and the Pandavas and the great Rishis like like uh, Asita Devala, Vasishta, and so many saintly personalities had come to take a bath in that Ram Rudh Kunda and the, the solar eclipse. So at that time, even the Vrajwasis had come, including Radharani and the Gopis and Dandababa Baba and, and, and Yashoda Mahi and the Gopas and, and so many Vrajwasis, they had come to take a bath during that solar eclipse. So at that, uh, contemplating on that pastime, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, sitting in Navadvi, and there he is contemplating and he revealed that to Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur. And then Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur revealed this, this inner desire of Bhakti Vinod Thakur to, to his most intimate disciples, some of the senior god brothers of Srila Prabhupada, one of them being uh, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami, Sridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada was very fond of him. When Srila Prabhupada was a Grihastha, in, uh, especially in Prayag, uh, in Allahabad, Srila Prabhupada had his little pharmaceutical business. And in Prayag, uh, like a grihastha, just like how we are grihasthas right now, we always respect the sannyasis and we invite them to our homes and we do the Hari Kirtan and Hari Katha in our homes and then we invite devotees uh, when a sannyasi or a senior Vaishnava comes. So at that time, uh, Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami was uh, uh, in the Gaudiya Mat that Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur had established in Allahabad. Srila uh, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Goswami Thakur Prabhupada had established 64 Gaudiya Mats all over India. And Srila Prabhupada had established 108 ISKCON temples all over the world, which was a prediction at the time of his birth. His father, Srila Gaur Mohan Dev, called an astrologer. And the astrologer, looking at the Kundali or the astrological chart of Srila Prabhupada, he says, your son is going to be a great Vaishnava. He will establish 108 temples all over the world. So this was also a prediction at the time of the birth of, of Srila Prabhupada in Kolkata. So, anyways, coming back to Bhakti Raksha Sridhar Dev Goswami, Srila Prabhupada had also mentioned that after I'm gone, please take guidance from Srila Bhakti Raksha Sridhar Dev Goswami. He had instructed uh, many of his uh, senior leading disciples, but uh, it was their misfortune that uh, they were not able to uh, accept the instructions of some of the uh, leading acharyas of Gaudiya but uh, they were very selfless in nature. They were misunderstood uh, by the uh, ISKCON uh, uh, leaders, and uh, and and sometimes you know it was also it is it is a little complicated, and I don't want to really go into it. But uh, some of the Gaudiya acharya uh, Gaudiya uh, leaders they wanted to snatch the devotees from ISKCON and reinitiate them, although they were initiated by Prabhupada. So that was also not the proper etiquette. It was some kind of a, a fault on their end also. So because of that, they were very cautious that you no, know, they even made rules that uh, they do not even entertain anybody from Gaudiya Math. They can come and take darshan, but they cannot speak. So in that process, there were some offenses committed on both sides. But especially what happens is when we do not respect uh, devotees, then we commit a lot of offenses and fall downs happen. And a lot of fall downs of Prabhupada leading sannyas disciples happened after Prabhupada left due to their offenses to those pure Vaishnavas. So we have to be very, very, very careful. Hari sthane aparade tare hari naam toma sthane aparade nahi paritran. Narutam Das Thakur says in one bhajan that one who commits an offense at the lotus feet of Hari, at the lotus feet of Krishna, then hari sthane aparade tare hari naam. Just by taking the holy name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, that can nullify that that uh, cause and effect of making an aparad at the lotus feet of Sri Hari. But Toma Stanya means com committing an offense against a pure Vaishnava, Nahi Paritran. There is no recourse. And that is one of the reasons. And that is the reason even today, some of us, even the leaders, do not understand the importance of these acharyas. The Tiro Bhav and Abhira, Abhir Bhav, at least of at least uh, of the Acharyas, the six Goswami should be wonderfully celebrated. A few uh, half an hour or one hour dedicated 
you know, in, in that comes only once or twice a year, you know, that will only enhance our bhakti. It will only help us. So when we don't uh, think about them, then you think Srila Prabhupada is going to be pleased? Absolutely not. It's like, you know, we say, oh, papa, papa, oh, dada, dada, but we disrespect papa's papa. We disrespect, we, we disrespect or we do not honor uh, father's father or the grandfather. We do not show love and respect. And this whole movement of Krishna Prem is is the mercy is when we show so much love and respect for these acharyas, no matter how ignorant we may be, that mercy of Sri Radha will come to us. No matter how 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 fallen we are, because of them we will be saved. Because we have shown some respect and we have shown so love towards their lotus feet. That is the missing ingredient, you know. And 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 if that happens, that is that is the most important. Um, part of, of our pure bhakti. So, Bhakti Rakshak Siddhartha Goswami Maharaj was hearing Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur. And one in one of his pravachans, Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur mentioned about what his father, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Thakur, talked. Bhakti Rakshak Thakur said that I it is my desire to build a hut or a kutir in Kurukshetra. And Srila Bhakti Rikshak Siddhar Dev Goswami Maharaj was, he mentions that I am a very keen listener of Guru Maharaj. When Guru Maharaj speaks, you know, I have all my antenna completely absorbed in, in my Guru Maharaj's uh, pravachans. And so was Srila Prabhupada. Um, even Prabhupada was very much uh, uh, eulogized and, and, and uh, appreciated by Srila Bhakti Siddhar Saraswati Thakur. Uh, even in the Vrajmandal Parikrama, when Prabhupada used to join his Guru Maharaj's Vrajmandal Parikrama, a lot of the disciples and the congregation members used to go around here and there in Vrindavan and in Vrajmandal. But in the evenings, when Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Prabhupada was giving a lecture, that all the disciples should be present when Guru Maharaj is speaking. Not that they are going around taking darshan and going doing this and that. But Prabhupada, uh, Abhay Charande, Abhay Charnaravinda Das, he used to sit in, in Bhakti Siddhan Prabhupada's every lecture. And Bhakti Siddhan Prabhupada remarked openly that he likes to listen. So this is a very good quality. Same thing, Sri Bhakti Rakshak Siddhar Dev Goswami Maharaj used to listen very keenly and attentively. So he said that, I'm a keen listener, but I could not believe my ears what Guru Maharaj said. He said, Sri Bhakti Vinod Thakur says that he wants to build a hut or a kutia in Kurukshetra, not in Vrindavan, not in Vrajmandal, not in Govardhan, not in Radhakun. I could not believe my ears. And he, he, he again kind of uh, patiently waited till again that point was made. And then it was reaffirmed. Yes. And what is the reason that Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur wanted to build in Kurukshetra? Uh, Kuruk Are Baba, we are Gaudiya Vaishnavas. How about building a Bhajan Kutir or staying in Radhakun? When we are very mature in our bhakti or in Govardhan or any of the Vraj Mandal places of, of, of the pastimes of Krishna or in Brahman Ghat or in Gokul in, in Chintaharan Ghat or in, 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 uh, in uh, different places like Kadamter and, or, in Chak or in Chakleshwar Mahadev or in different places like in Kamyavan where so many different pastimes in Vraj Mandal of the Lord happened. Hmm. So then Bhakti Yuna Thakur is explaining that, you know what? At that time when Radha and Krishna, they meet in Kurukshetra, my Radha is in the highest pain of separation. Although Krishna is right in front of her, probably just a couple feet away, but yet they're so far apart because uh, Radha and Krishna are not united under the, uh, under the banks of, uh, at the banks of the Jamuna in Vrindavan, under that Kadama tree, where the environment is so conducive, and that wonderful verse that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had quoted from Sahitya Darpan the, about a mundane poetry, a verse that this is the same uh, lover of mine, and I am the same person, but uh, this is not the banks of the of the of the Vetasi, and, and this is not the same uh, conducive environment and the nights of Chaitra in the full moon. 
So Rupa Goswami and Sarup Damodar Goswami understood the meaning and Rupa Goswami actually converted that, that uh, mundane verse in Sahitya Darpan into a very, very Vaishnava verse that he has put into his literature that, yes, I am the same Radha and I am the same Krishna and he is the same Krishna, but this is not the place and, 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 this, and this is not the bank of the Jamuna and this is not that Kadam trees. And this is not the Vrindavan and there is no Jamuna. And then, you know, the, the delightful note that Krishna played, Pancham Juse, the fifth note that he used to play on his flute, uh, that is not also present because this Krishna doesn't even have his flute and the environment is not conducive. I miss it so much. I want to take him back to Vrindavan. It is my desire so that I can get united very freely uh, with Krishna. So my Radha at that time is so much burning in separation. She's almost dying. And I want to be by the side of my Radha Rani and give her sulas as a manjri, as, 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 the, as the prana sakhi, as her nitya sakhi. She is so much in pain. She's so much in pain that she needs the utmost assistance at that time. And at that time, I will, I will, I will caress her. I will give her my shoulder. I will, I will give her a lot of assurance and I will I will I will tell her that yes Krishna will come back to Vrindavan do not worry oh Pran Sakhi oh Radhe so that is the reason Bhakti Vinod Thakur would like to stay in Kurukshetra on, on at Ramrud build a kutia and meditate on that bhav on that seva see this is Radha Dasya that is Rupa Goswami Eto Chamsha Kalapum Sam Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam. This is what Srimad Bhagavatam says. All of the above mentioned incarnations, either plenary portions or the plenary portions of the portions, all those avatars of Krishna, and but Lord Krishna is the original supreme personality of Godhead. So Sri Bhagavatam explained the deeper meanings, showed us how to obtain the supreme Lord of all by giving definitions for all the stages of devotion to him. What is Sneha? What is Mana? What is Pranaya? All this is Krishna Prem. What is Raga? What is Anuraga? What is Bhava? What is Modanakya Bhava? What is Madanakya Bhava? Uh, this is all the Bhavas of, of especially the last two, Madanakya and Mohanakya are the Bhavas of exclusively of Srimati Radharani, not even possessed by any of the gopis. So all these things, you know, he gave definitions for us from Shraddha, Nishta to Shuddha Sattva and Bhav Bhakti. He manifested the definition of Sadhana Bhakti. Ah, Krishna, he says that Kriti Sadhya Bhavet Sadhya, Bhaya Sa Sadhana Vidya, Nitya Siddhasya Bhavasya Prakatam Vidhi Sadhyata. When transcendental devotion, service by which love for Krishna is attained, it is executed by the senses because naturally we are living in this material world. We have the senses. It is called sadhana bhakti. When we are engaging ourselves, risikena, risikesha, sevanam. Risik means the senses and risikesh means the master of senses. So in the Narad Bhakti Sutra, Naradji mentions this. Or devotional service in practice. Such devotional eternally exists within the heart of every living entity. Uh, so even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that Krishna Gaviraj Goswami mentioned that uh, Krishna Bhakti Nitta Siddha Sadhu Kabunai Shravana Di Chitte Hridaya Koray Udai Udai. Uh, it is not that pure Krishna Bhakti can be found outside. It is there already in the heart of everyone. Uh, but Shravana Kirtana, but, but Shravana Adi, like listening, etc. Shravan Kirtan Smaran Adi, Hridaya Koroya Udai. It is re-manifest. Right now we have forgotten our, our, our consciousness is so polluted that, that it has to be manifest again. It has to be polished. It has to, be, it has to become crystal clear. And our Acharyas help us to attain that. So such devotion eternally exists within the heart of every living entity. And the awakening of this, of this eternal devotion is the potentiality of devotional service in practice. This is also in, in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Chila Rupa Goswami explained 
that sadhana is only sadhana when our goal is the attainment of bhav bhakti. Huh? Otherwise, that sadhana bhakti, we can do it for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years until we die, but we are still in the 10th grade. That bhav or Krishna Prem uh, has not spurit, it has not, it has not manifest. Then, then that sadhana bhakti has not culminated to the ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. Because the ultimate, it is divided into three different parts. First part is known as the, the uh, sambandha. The second one is the, the uh, abhidhyay. Sambandha means once we understand through knowledge by given through Vaishnavas books like Bhagavad Gita that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. We have to have a Sambandha, Atma, Paramatma, all those fundamental philosophies. That is Sambandha Gyan. That Sambandha Gyan will take us to the next step is through Sadhana Bhakti, chanting, hearing, having, taking Prashadam, etc. That will take us through the process. And that Sadhana Bhakti is the process. And if that process it has to culminate to the last stage, which is known as the prayojan, from abhidya to prayojan. Prayojan means Krishna bhav, Krishna prem. So if that does not happen, then, then that sadhana bhakti uh, is like a boat that has been anchored. Then it can be called sadhana bhakti only if we can attain the prayojan, or at least we know the goal of life, which is <coughs> Krishna bhav and Krishna prem. Ah, so Rupa Goswami gave us those definitions of Prem and he showed the entire world the nature of Sri Mati Radharani's attraction to Krishna. This is so important. Ah, he, he, gave, he gave us that. Rupa Goswami explained that Anya uh, Bilasita Sunya Jnana Karma Anavritam. He explained all those which we already discussed briefly. Rupa Goswami also gave us the definitions of Prem. And he showed the entire world the nature of Srimati Radharani's uh, attraction to Krishna. He showed that the world, how we can be attracted to Radha and Krishna. He taught the identity of Radha Krishna and also uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as mentioned in Chaitanya Charita Amrita, Anarpita, Harim, Ratha, Karunaya, Avartina, Kalau. Like nobody has given that gift uh, that of, of that mercy as given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this Kali Yuga. Samar paitum unut, unat vajala rasam swa bhaktim shriyam. Amazing. Uh, samar paitum. And he gave unat vajala rasa. Unat vajala rasa means that rasa of Gopi Bhav, of Madhuri rasa, that unat vajala rasa of Radharani. Uh, Swa Bhakti Shriya is owned how to be devoted to himself in that Vraj Bhav, in that Gopi Bhav, especially Radharani's Bhav. Hari Purata Sundara Dyuti Kadamba Sandi Pitaha Sadaridaye Kandare Suratova Sachi Nandana. So, when will that Sachi Nandan, Goranga Mahaprabhu, uh, give me, when will that devotional service uh, uh, with that? manifest in my heart just as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu displayed and he wanted. So like this, who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Radha Bhava Dyuti? Stubilitam uh, Naomi Krishna Swarupa. He is Sri Krishna covered by the complexion of the Bhava of Srimati Radha. He came to distribute her service to this world. Who described the identity of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Arva Bhavavatacharya did not. And Sri Raman, Ra, Rai Ramananda did not either. Uh, all knew. But when Sri Rai Ramananda began to explain this, his identity, Mahaprabhu covered his mouth. Boss. On that wonderful conversation between Rai Ramananda and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Puri, uh, in, in, uh, in, in Dakshin Bharat, by the banks of Godavari, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asks wonderful questions to Rai Ramananda. What is the goal of life? Can you tell me? The Supreme Lord wanted to hear from his devotee, Vishaka Saki, who is Rai Ramananda. And I want you to answer my question based on Shastric evidence. So like that, Rai Ramananda is saying, Mahaprabhu telling, asking questions, and Rai Ramananda is talking about Bhagavad Gita verses. He is talking about whatever you do, you should offer it 
to Krishna. Yad karosi, yad asnasi. Offer everything to Krishna. That is that is the most uh, that is the most important thing or the goal of life. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu year by year. This is external. Tell me more. And then he quotes Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma Na Sochati Na Kangshati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhakti Labhite Param. Another verse of Bhagavad Gita that one should not hanker a true personality who is in 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 pure devotion, uh, who who is established in self-realization. He doesn't hanker after material things and he always looks upon everybody equally he sees the paramatma in all he sees krishna everywhere brahma bhuta prasanna atma he's always very happy and 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 such a person is is, is, is sama sarveshu bhuteshu mad bhakti labhate param has obtained the highest bhakti he's quoting krishna from the bhagavad gita to chaitanya mahaprabhu and mahaprabhu says iho bhaiya this is also external. Aage kaho. Tell me more. And Rai Ramananda quotes one of the most uh, quintessential verses of the Bhagavad Gita. Sarvadharan paritijya maamekam sharnam vraja ahamtam sarvapape bhyo moksasyami masacha. That give up all varieties of religion that you may have all different concepts. Maamekam sharnam vraja only surrender unto me. Ahamtam sarva pape bhiv moksa shyami masucha o Arjun. I will take care of all your karmic reactions. I will take care of all your sinful reactions if you only surrender to me. Yeah? And that is the highest goal. Krishna explains that to Arjun in the Bhagavad Gita. He speaks that. And the same thing is being repeated because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that if you tell me something, I want scriptural evidence. So he quotes the verse from Bhagavad Gita that Krishna has quoted himself and Krishna is sitting in front of him in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu says, Ramanan, iha bahiya, aage kaho. So in other words, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rejects Bhagavad Gita. He kind of says, iha bahiya, this is external, Baba. Tell me more. So Ramanan Rai goes into different verses of Srimad Bhagavatam and like like uh, quoting Lord Brahma, he says, uh, what is that verse? He says that uh, right now that verse is not going, but the essence of that verse was that Stane Stita Shruti Gadam Tano Mano One should wherever one is in whatever ashram one is in the Varnashram system, whether one is a, is a Shudra or one is a is a Vaishya or a Kshatriya or a Brahman or one is a Brahmachari or one is a, 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 a Grihastha or one is in the in the Vanaprastha Ashram or Sanyasa Ashram, Stanisthita. Whatever Ashram you are situated in, Stanisthita, Shruti Gata, one should listen to Hari Katha uh, and Tano Vag Manovir with the whole body engaging his whole senses. Vag means with his speech, constantly chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare, glorifying Sri Krishna, Tano Vag Mano Bir, Stanis Tita, Shruti Gadam, Tano Vag Mano Bir. <clears throat> and then I forget the next couple lines, but I think the last line says, uh, Jito Api Jito uh, Va. And if one does that, then one can conquer Ajita. Krishna, one of the names of Krishna is Ajit. Now, Ajit means he cannot be conquered. Krishna cannot be conquered by anybody. Uh, Jito, one can even conquer the unconquerable by doing so, by engaging one's senses, constantly chanting, remembering in whatever sthan you are, whether one is a grihastha, whether what, and what that sthan also means that whether even in today's world, in our present practical sense, whether you're going to school, college, office, whether you're at home, cooking, Whatever your your what your consciousness should be twenty four hour should be or twenty four hours should be Krishna conscious. That is the essence of this verse, which Lord Brahma, I think it is in the eleventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam that Rai Ramanandji quotes. So Krishna says, I mean Mahaprabhu says, Iyo bhaiyo, agi koho. So like that, Rai Ramanand goes through the different stages of bhakti is explaining, and then. From Dasyaras, he goes to Sakyaras, from Sakya, and then from, from when he talks about the Vatsalyaras, the parental love, and, and the Sakyaras, 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's eyes started opening wide and he started nodding. And then he says, yes, yes, tell me more about this nectar. And then Rai Ramananji goes into the Madhuri Ras of the Gobi's Avraj. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so happy. He's in ecstasy. Rai Ramananda is quoting different wonderful things. And, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is beaming. He is so happy. Yes, yes, tell me more. Now he doesn't say the word Iha Bhaiha. At that time, he's not saying this is external. Please tell me more. Please tell me more. And then he starts describing the Radha's frame specifically in the Madhuri Ras. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu shuts his mouth. He shuts his mouth. Because then the and the Acharyas kind of uh, reflect on it. Why? Because both of them who actually would swoon, they would both faint if they went into the Radha Bhav. That is one of the reasons why even Sukhdev Goswami, the, the speaker of Srimad Bhagavatam, doesn't mention directly Radhaji's name. Because as soon as, because Radha is Guru, and you never take the Guru's name. That is one of the etiquette. Ah, you never show your mala when you're chanting the, on the beads also. That is why we have the bead bag. So these are some of the protocols in Hari Bhakti Vilas Gopal Vrtaka Swami has mentioned. Just like a chaste wife never takes the name of her husband. That is Vedic culture. Similarly, Guru's name is never taken uh, in public uh, or otherwise also by a, by a disciple. And Sukhdeva Goswami is the disciple of Radha because he is the parrot, Radharani's parrot. Radharani teaches him everything. He tells Radharani in the, in the, in the Kunjas, and tells Sarika, hey, you know, today, uh, when Krishna, you see him, come and give me some indication that he's on his way so that I can set up the Kunja nicely or I can do some drama because I know he's probably going to be late and give me all that information. What kind of stories he's going to make up by, you know, when he's in the, the Kunjas of the other gopis, go and hide into those Kunjas in a tree and you report to me. And like that, Radharani trains. So one one another is being somebody is being trained by somebody. Then there is a so there is a, uh, a, 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 a a situation where one is a guru and one is a disciple. So that is one of the reasons in Srimad Bhagavatam he never takes because I explained that in the last katha that we had begun in the Bhagavatam in the in the introduction of Bhagavatam, which will happen again tomorrow. We will be continuing that uh, Sukhdeva Goswami doesn't take the name of Sri Radha. And uh, that is one of the reasons also Srila Prabhupada, you know, mentioned that one should not take casually Radhe Radhe, say Hare Krishna, because we are sadhaks. And some of them even criticize Srila Prabhupada without understanding the deeper bhav. We, because Radharani, don't make Radharani's name so cheap. She is of such a highest concept, conception of theism that not everybody will be able to understand that. And if one takes the name like that very casually, it can turn to be offensive. Unless and until you are mature enough to, to have that bhav. Because when you say Hare Krishna, you are safe. Safe because Radharani is also included in the word Hara. And along with that, all the other exalted Vaishnavas and the devotees and Radharani's servants are present. Nija Sarva Saktish in the word Hara. That is why Shakshat Haritvena in this seventh verse. Haritvena means, we explained that in our last sitting, that Haritvena means one who possesses the qualities of Hari and Radharani. There's nobody as strong as the one who takes away the, one who steals the, steals something, the highest stealer. Also, Krishna recognizes the highest, highest stealing personality uh, in the entire creation. Vraje Prasiddham, Navnita Choram, Gopa Ganana, Dukkula Choram, Aneka Paap Arjit Choram Chora Agraganyam Purusham Namami Bilva Mangal Thakur in his wonderful Chora Agraganyam Ashtakam he says that Vraje Prasiddha one who is very famous in Vraj in Vrindavan Vraje Prasiddha Navnita Choram one who is very very famous as Navnit Chor as the stealer or the the butter the thief one was very famous as the butter thief. Uh, he is the one who is Gopangananam Dukkula uh, Choram. He takes away all the miseries uh, and the sadness of whole Vraj Mandal. He takes away Gopangananam. Gopangananam means the gopis, the gopas, the cows, the goes. He takes away their sadness. 
Uh, anytime there is a problem, Krishna is right there, whether it is the Dawanul or it is the Agasur or the Bakasur or the Vyomasur or the the onslaught of Indra, you know, where he is he is Indra is upset and he wants to take revenge uh, on the Vrajvasis. Why they stop my Yagya? And he is pouring torrential rains on these Vrajvasis and thunderbolts and Krishna immediately comes to the rescue by lifting the Govardhan hill and he came, completely brings all the Vrajvasis under one roof so that he can personally even um, get the opportunity to have all the Rasas, Dasya, Sakya, Madhurya and the uh, uh, the, 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 the Vatsalyaras all under one roof. It's amazing how the Rasikachiris explain even that Leela so Dukkula Choram, he takes away all the, that is why he's known as Hari. And then further, Bilva Mangal Thakur is saying that Aneka Papar Jit Choram and for all the living entities, you know, we are simply uh, going around in the samsar with so many uh, sinful reactions. So one who surrenders to Krishna, one who does Krishna Bhakti, Aneka Pap, Arjit Choram, many, many lifetimes of Pap, Krishna steals away. He takes Ahamtam Sarva Pape Vyamoksha Shyami Masacha. Verse from Bhagavad Gita again. So, um, uh, he, and, uh, uh, he says in the last line, I mean, in, uh, that repeats everywhere, Chor uh, Agragarnyam Purusham Namami. The foremost thief, Krishna has been given the title as the foremost thief, Chor Agragarnyam, the number one thief, uh, Purusham Namami. I offer my obeisances to that foremost thief, Sri Krishna. Now, this Sri Krishna, uh, who is Sri Hari, who can take away all these karmic reactions, all these papa, etc., but he is the same Hari, Krishna, who has taken, stolen the heart of Radha. Uh, and this Radha is even more of a Hari, in Haritva, uh, the, 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 uh, the source of Haritva being that Hara, who, who has taken away the heart of Krishna, who has stolen everything of Krishna, stolen the mind, stolen the consciousness, etc. That is why he came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to relish the bhav of Sri Radha, to relish the bhav of somebody who has taken everything, he has stolen everything from Krishna. So that's that Hari also, and that word Hara comes from that, uh, that stealer of everything of Krishna, Radharani. So, uh, like this, we have to understand there's so much to say. I started on Rupa Goswami and trying to combine this verse. It's amazing. So, Radha Bhav Dyuti Suvalitam, he takes the Bhav of Radha and the complexion of Bhav to understand the Chor Radha. Like Krishna says in the Radha uh, Charitram, uh, Nantran Prabhu, you had sent me a long time ago, that, and I remember that particular part in that Leela when uh, Krishna makes a very, very uh, sort of, what is it called, uh, statement, which is uh, uh, like a kataksh. Uh, and he says that, uh, that uh, Radharani says that, oh, you are that famous thief of Gokul. Oh, who doesn't know you? And Krishna says that, yeah, look at these people of Barsana, how they are. Ulta chor kotwal kodate, meaning the, the pot calling the kettle black. Uh, they are the ones who are stealing. In Barsana, they are the, they are the main stealers. Uh, the person from Barsana is the main stealer and calling me a chor. And Radharani asks, what did I steal from you? Krishna says, Radhe, you stole my heart. And Radharani blushes. So this is the meaning of Hari or anything connected with the word Hara. Uh, these are the deeper meanings and that is the reason why so even Sarva or, or Rai Ramananda could not explain further because Mahaprabhu had to stop it because you know all knew but when Sri Ramananda Rai tried to explain his identity Mahaprabhu covered his mouth he did not want to, to reveal his identity to everybody you know who knows who is watching on the banks of the Godavari so only Rupa Goswami could completely describe it all others were checked but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not check Rupa Goswami. So this is one of the specialities of, of, of Rupa Goswami. Yeah, Rupa Goswami was not checked by, by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu chose him to reveal himself to this world. 
Mahaprabhu also chose him to distribute the service of Srimati Radhika to the world. Rupa Goswami had a special mood, very, very special mood. And those who follow in his footsteps are called Rupa Nugas. Uh, it's very easy to use the word Rupa Nuga without understanding. Sula Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur's Pranam Mantra, the last line, Rupa Nuga Viruddha Apasiddhanta Dvanta Harine. What does that mean? Rupa Nuga, those who are the followers of Rupa Goswami, uh, Apasiddhanta, any kind of philosophies or any kind of understanding, uh, anything, any kind of understanding, any kind of philosophies that would curtail the service of Radha Dasya, Apasiddhanta. Siddhanta and Apasiddhanta. Apasiddhanta means opposite. Dvanta Harine. So any Siddhantas or principles that did not meet the standard of Rupa Goswami, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada defeated those. Like Rupa Goswami defeated those principles, even of, of Ramanujacharya, who preached the Vaikuntha Bhakti, because that's Sri Sampradaya. Lakshmi Narayan in Dasya Bhav. Dvanta Harine. Cut into pieces by wonderful philosophical transcendental arguments and Shastric evidence of Ujwala Ras, of Parki Ras, which the, the, the uh, uh, Sri Sampradaya personalities could not understand. Not even Ramanujacharya himself. Of course, it's a Leela. How could Ramanujacharya not understand? In one sense, he's under the spell of Yogamaya. He's Lord Balram himself. But perhaps Lord Balram is also not given into the entry into the deepest kunjas. And he does not go deliberately because he cannot, he's not allowed to go into because otherwise there will be Rasa Abhas. If Balramji is present, so it's like a senior brother. Even in our normal day to day dealings in our household, if we are in the Vedic culture, husband and wife cannot freely talk or display their romance or even their anger or their fights if a father-in-law is present or if the elder brother is present uh, the bade bhaiya right so similarly even balramji himself he curtails himself as dauji and he doesn't go to this to the different he is not uh, allowed in the uh, he yogmaya doesn't allow him to go into the uh, into the the, the uh, the uh, uh, deeper nuances of, uh, of Radha Krishna's prem or uh, the Madhuri Ras. It is curtailed. He himself is curtailed. The Supreme Lord himself is curtailed in the form of Balra, but he is given entry into the Madhuri Ras as the younger sister of Radha Rani becoming Ananga Manjari. So that way Balramji gets that taste of the, of the Parki Rasa as Ananga Manjari. <laughs> This is very deep, you know, what can I say? So Mahaprabhu chose the uh, Rupa Goswami uh, due to the special mood. Even Raya Ramananda, Samaravatacharya, so many devotees were stopped for even discussing all these. And those who follow in his footsteps are called the Rupanuga followers of the path of Raganuga Bhakti. Uh, Rupa Goswami described Bhakti, uh, as we mentioned, as Anya Bilashada Shunya Jnana Karma Navrata Manukulina Krishna Anushinvaram. So this, this is the quintessential of Rupa Goswami's teaching. Uh, in the very first two lines of this verse, uh, <clears throat> he showed us what pure, what one should not accept as pure bhakti, jnana and karma. And he also explained, Aropa Siddha Bhakti, Sangha Siddha Bhakti, Karma Mishra Bhakti, Yoga Mishra Bhakti, Anya Bilashita Yukta Bhakti, a bhakti covered by material designations. Bah, that is the, if it is covered with some hetu, a Krishna Bhakti should be Ahituki without any material motivation and so on. So he described all these topics. If Rupa Goswami had not appeared in Kalyu, then who would have opened the great storehouse of Rajaprem? Just like if Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had not appeared, like Vasudev Gosha saying, Yadi Gaurangna Hoito, Tabeki Hoito, Kemone Dharitam De, Radhara Mahima, Prema Rasasima, Jagat Janatake. If Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had not appeared, how would I have uh, maintained myself? I would have died a long time ago. But it is by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that I kept myself alive. What would have happened? Radhara Mahima. How would we have understood 
the glories of Radharani, Prem or Rasa Seema, that Prem of Radharani or Madanakya Mohanakya Bhav in the Ujwala Ras, uh, which is the ultimate of Krishna Prem. Uh, sneha, Snigdha, Mana, and Pranaya, and all these different levels, uh, the highest being the Prem of Radharani, Jagata Janataki, how would the world have known? Yadi hmm? Gauranga Hoite. So, like this, we can understand the position of Rupa Goswami is just like a swan that separates milk from water. And there are different karma misra bhakti, jnana misra bhakti, all that is being separated and sifted so that the pure hansa, uh, uh, the, the quality of a hansa or a swan is to, uh, even when it is drinking, it can, it, water, it can separate the pure milk from the water and relish that milk. Uh, that is separated. So who else could have separated the rasas to taste them? So Rupaka Swami is considered that excellent Supahansa, Paramhansa, who has given us this rasa, taken out, extracted in Krishna consciousness itself. There are so many components. So he has abandoning everything. He performed bhajan in Vrindavan and wrote his rasic literatures. He lived like a bee, taking the nectar of lotuses. <laughs> Beautiful. Indeed, Rupa Goswami. Uh, when will he give us shelter, Baba? Who could have understood the nectar he was collecting? Who could have understood Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan, in Mathura, and in Dwarka? Even in Dwarka, Krishna's pastimes in the Vigda Madhav play, he has given a wonderful treatise in the explaining on the nuances of the of the Prem Bhakti or the Madhurya Rasa of the gopis of Vrindavan and the queens of Dwarka, how could we have known the sweet Rajlilas and the love between Radha and Madhav? Mm. How, how could we have known by the mercy of his lotus feet? Oh, Rupa Goswami. Hey, Sri Rupa. Oh, Sri Rupa. All can sing about and attain such divine bliss if we take shelter. And the surrendered Madhav Das is always praying to embrace Sri Rupa Goswami's glories. Yan Kali Rupa Sharira Nai. Madhav Das has written Dharatra. There's a bhajan by Madhav Das that uh, is, uh, is, is, is explaining the glories of, of uh, Rupa Goswami. Even, even uh, Srila Bhaktivedan Saraswati Thakur, we, in one of the verses of the Samsara Dhavanal, we went into the details of one of the most important key bhajans and favorite bhajan of Srila Bhaktivedan Saraswati Thakur. Uh, Sri Rupa Manjari Pada, uh, Shei Mora Sampada, Shei Mora Jeevanera Jeevan, Sri Rupa Manjari Pada, Shei Mora Sampada, Shei Mora Bhajana Pujana, Shei Mora Bhajana Pujana, Sri Rupa Manjari Pada, the Lotus Feet of Manjari. Rupa Manjari is my bhajan and pujan. Shame or a prana dhana. It is my life and soul. Shame or a abharana. Uh, like that, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sri Thakur is relishing that bhajan that has been composed <laughs> to glorify Sri Rupa Manjari. Mm. So, so on and so forth. So, like this, Sri Rupa Goswami left everything, all his family members his position he was such a great minister in the court of uh nawab Hussain shah his him and his brother sakhar malik he was even given the, the nawab Hussain shah had given them arabic names sakhar malik and uh, the other name was dabir khas so dabir khas means the treasurer and sakhar malik was the chief minister so rupa goswami was the chief minister and uh, uh, they had so much wealth. It is said that they had three boatloads of of uh, of, mo of sona mohar. Uh, the uh, uh, mohar means the gold coins. Three boats full of. So they were so rich, and Nawaz and Shah would consult these two brothers for every little thing. That much he was dependent, and they were such scholarly personalities. They knew Arabic. They knew Farsi. Of course, there was scholarly in bhakti and in sanskrit and all the scriptures but externally they did the job of the ministers and finally they give the give gave up that position 
So Rupa Goswami left her Tatta Sudar Sudam. So, uh, what is that verse uh, in the Sada Goswami Astagam? Kopin uh, They gave up everything and they accepted the Kopin, a sign of renunciation. They only were wearing Kopin and underwear. That's all. And they gave up all the Asesha Mandala Patim, uh, the six Goswamis, Rupa and Sanatan. They were, they were Asesha Mandala Patim. Unlimited wealth they had. In spite of that, they gave up everything. So, uh, at, at Radha Damodar Mandir in Vrindavan, he completed most of his books. And also in Kadamted, in, which is very close between uh, uh, Barsana and Nandgram. Very, very, very alok, <coughs> very, very uh, divya location. It's so transcendental, especially Ter Kadam is one of my favorite places uh, where Radharani actually came uh, to Rupa Goswami. Well, Rupa Goswami was uh, uh, absorbed in his bhajan and um, it was so austere in uh, Ter Kadam that there was nothing available there. Uh, and he wanted to, you know, make some nice uh, bhoga, and, but there were no good ingredients available. So one time, uh, a very, very beautiful young girl came, very, very beautiful. And um, uh, she just uh, gave a nice uh, katori, a bowl of kheer uh, to uh, Rupa Vaswami. And then she says, Baba, I'll come back and take the katori. Please have this kheer. And then Sanatan Goswami comes after a little bit. And then Sanatan Goswami sees this kheer. And uh, Rupa Goswami shares it with him. And Sanatan Goswami says, wait a minute, Rupa. Where did you get this kheer from? Here in this in this forest of Vrindavan in Tergatam, there is nothing. Uh, where, you, where did you get all this rice and this chini and this sugar and all this saffron and all these camphor and all these wonderful ingredients uh, to make this kheer? So then he explained that a beautiful girl came and she just gave it. And then Sanatana Goswami realized, Sri Radhe, it was Radharani who came personally and gave that kheer to Rupa Goswami. And this is how it is that, you know, when sometimes the devotee thinks about something, uh, personally, the Supreme Lordships, Radha or Krishna, or both of them, they come and personally serve the devotee. Hmm. And he began to write this, uh, there's this drama describing the pastimes of Krishna, but on the way to Jagannath Puri at Sri Satvamapura, uh, Sri Vati Satvama Devi, Sri Krishna's queen in Dwarka, appeared in his dream. And, I, and, and this is about the Vigad Madhav. Oh, Rupa, you should write a separate drama about me. <coughs> uh, you should write a separate uh, drama about me. This, this uh, dream came in Jagannath Puri. There is a place uh, called Satya Bhama Pura uh, in, 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 in near, near to Puri. So afterwards in Puri, Mahaprabhu said to him, don't take Krishna out of Vrindavan. <laughs> Beautiful. Of course, Mahaprabhu as Krishna knew that uh, Pama came in the dream of, of Rupa Goswami. So uh, Mahaprabhu gave him an indication. Hey, I know you're going to compose something, but make sure you don't take uh, Krishna out of Vrindavan. Ekam padam Krishna doesn't take a step outside Vrindavan. So he had to compose something uh, that was uh, uh, that was going to be satisfying to Satya Bhama as well as not transgressing the desire of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, don't take Krishna out of Vrindavan. You should write two dramas. So that way, then what happened? The, the, the Rupa Goswami not only wrote Vidanta Madhav, he also wrote Lalita Madhav. So two plays he wrote. And Satya Mahama would not appear uh, to an ordinary person. Actually, Satya Mahama is a incarnation or a... Uh, uh, a Swarupa Lakshan or Swarupa of Radharani. Actually, a Gadadhar Pandit has the Satya Bhama mood, although she is Radharani. So, Gadadhar Pandit has taken the rightest mood uh, in, in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela. We say, no, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. So, in Puri, uh, Gadadhar Pandit used to 
be very very humble whatever mahaprabhu wanted she he would do yes mahaprabhu whatever your desire is but radharani is not like that if shyam sundar said i want you to do this are chal chal who is going to listen to you if shyam sundar said radha you have to pay tax oh gopis you have to take pay tax for all the milk and the cream and everything my baba nanda baba is the king of raja so the gopis chal chal shyam sundar hat yahan se the khor sakri past time in barsana uh, krishna and the gopas wanted to collect tax from radharani and and then and they said you have to give us money or you give us in the form of milk or yogurt and radharani says push the way and the gopis and the gopas had a fight and they would not let uh, radharani and the gopis cross through a very narrow opening in that brahma parvat by by uh, in barsana and then they issued into a huge fight like a transcendental fight so it's not that 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 uh, satyabhama can do that or the queens of dwarka can do that so gadadhar pandit is in the mood of satyabhama these are all some very wonderful uh, nuances that when we understand this from the proper source so like this rupa goswami heard the instructions of mahamburu don't take krishna out of vrindavan he could understand that satyabhama's intention and mahabrabhu's intention so he had he did this wonderful samadhan uh, and then he wrote this two two uh, wonderful plays and and like this you know he had compiled more than 30 books rupa goswami hamsa duta uddhav sandesh and many others most were uh, completed here in the sense in in the radha damodar temple in vrindavan most of them rupa goswami has his baitha is bhajan stali right opposite is samadhi barely 10 15 feet away opposite each other uh, is uh, where all the different some of these most of the scriptures were composed in radha damodar temple in seva kunj where shila prabhupad stayed 5 years before coming to the west so there are many different types of flowers such as beli chameli kamal lotus and so on but unless there is a bee present who can understand the nectar within those flowers eh? only a, a, a real bee can taste the deeper inner madhu or the honey from those flowers so rupa goswami is that bee there are so many scriptures on krishna consciousness uh, etc but only a, a bee like rupa goswami can extract the honey like even shri prabhupad ac bhakti or sami shri prabhupad 700 verses in the bhagavad gita it took 45 minutes for krishna to speak them but shri prabhupad has this uh, bhagavad gita as big as a telephone book with all his purports he's extracting the nectar shrimad bhagavatam has 18000 verses but shri prabhupad has volumes and volumes of shrimad bhagavatam explained through his purports shri prabhupad extracted that nectar being the true rupanuga following in the footsteps of rupa goswami so in the day time like this in the day time the bee goes to the lotus flowers and at night that lotus closes and the bee within it <laughs> wonderful analogy our shastrik and our acharyas realization is that same bee who is able to cut his way even through the bamboo cannot escape from the petals of a soft lotus in the same way all the gopis have very fragrant moods in their service to krishna but unless the bee is there how can we understand that fragrance and as the bee is trapped by the lotus flower the bee like krishna is trapped by the prema of the gopis <laughs> how amazing so krishna is trapped by the prema of gopis he is completely bound and that is why one of the names of krishna is damodar damodar bhaktam that is a very amazing nand pran prabhu you were there in the seminars that we were fortunate to give in shri vrindavan dham on the damodar ashtakam the word damodar means dham means a rope and udar means stomach one whose stomach is tied is known as damodar so of course most people know that this damodar applies to when yashoda mai tied up krishna when he was naughty and he broke the pots and then to to punish krishna she tied him to or ukkal to a to a uh, upside down grinding motor with the ropes so since then he was also known as damodar but our rasik acharyas the group of swami explained damodar means when krishna is, is is when the gopis are upset when the manjaris are upset because they upset radharani and when they see krishna 
They tie him to a tree on his belly with their achal. They make it a rope. And therefore, that Damodar is bhakti baddam due to the, the bhakti of the gopis. Otherwise, who can tie Krishna? In Vatsale Ras, rather, uh, Mother Yashoda tied him. And in the Madhuri Ras, the gopis tied him to a tamal tree. And therefore, he's also known as Damodar. Damodar bhakti badam applies to just like this example of the bee being trapped inside a lotus. And this bee can cut through a bamboo. But he, he cannot get out because Damodar is bhakti badam of the love, the lotus-like love of the gopis. When they close it, Krishna, that bee, Krishna cannot get out. Therefore, one of the names of Krishna is Madhusudan. <laughs> Madhusudan means one who extracts the honey. Uh, Madhu Sudan. But that is a bee. <laughs> the words like, for example, Ko Janata Mathura Vrindavan are significant in this song, which we had uh, in the in the song that uh, um, uh, Madhav Das has written. Without the mercy of Srila Rupa Goswami, who would we have been able to understand what is Mathura and what is Vrindavan? Even today, most people don't see the difference between the the Mathuresh Krishna or Dwarkadis Krishna and the Vrajendra Nandan Krishna. This is the mercy of Rupa Goswami. <laughs> Mathura is the place of Aishwarya Mai. It's the place of, of, of opulence and of the place of Aishwarya Bhav, where everybody knows that he is the Supreme Lord. So is Dwarka. But the devotion in the mood of opulence and reverence is the place in Mathura and Dwarka. Uh, but in Vrindavan, this place is of Madhurya Bhakti, sweet Bhakti, as Bhakti Mai. It is not based on Krishna's Aishwarya. Sometimes the gopis get an inclination that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. Mayushoda Mai also gets an inclination, sometimes a little glimpse that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. When Krishna opened his mouth, Mayushoda saw oh, all the universes. And then immediately she's thinking, Are Baba, look at the Maya. Vishnu's Maya is so great that I'm seeing all kinds of things in my, my Kana's mouth, in my Lala's mouth. I'm mesmerized, you know, and I'm seeing all these things because of illusion. And then she goes back to being the original mother, chastising Krishna and loving Krishna, feeding Krishna her breast milk. So the, uh, that awe and reverence is not there in, in Vrindavan. In Dwarka and Mathura, it is the Rupa Goswami gave all those delineations. Like this, we have to understand uh, the different uh, nuances. Uh, Mathura and Vrindavan are so close. They're very close. Like when we come to Vrindavan, even today, we have to get off at the Mathura station, right? There is no direct uh, 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 train uh, to Mathura, as, uh, to Vrindavan as such. And so everybody comes to Mathura. They are so close to each other. They're, they're not very, very far apart. Uh, but still, the bhav is different. Uh, no one from Vrindavan likes to visit Mathura, not the true Rajwasis. This is because even though they are close in geography, they are very far in mood. So the actual Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they don't even go to the Janmasthali of Krishna. You know, that is okay. We go because, you know, it is one of the sites you know, to, to offer our respects. But it is not the real, really rasa of the Vrajendra Nandan Krishna. Uh, so, you know, the Vrajmasis like to stay and the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they like to have their their mood, and they don't like to disturb their mood. Uh, although they're Mathura and Vrindavan, so this is because even though they are close in geography, they are far apart in the mood. Mm. Krishna, Janata, Vrajanita, without Srila Guru Goswami, who could understand the mood of Vrindavan and the behavior of the Rajvasis? Without him, how could we have understood the attachment of Radhika and Madhav? Sri Radha, Sri Radhi, Shri Radhika Mahadhavyo Rapara Madhurya Leela Gunarupa Namna Pratishana Swa Dandalolupasya Vande Guru Shri Charinaravindam Fifth verse, we already discussed that in detail. How would, would we have known uh, the, the attachment of Radha and Madhav, the amorous pastimes? So like this, Rupa Goswami is such a great Acharya that we are so fortunate to be in his line of this uh, of this movement as as Rupa uh, as Rupa Nugas. So like this, only Mahabhav is possible when we become 
understand Mahabharata when we become the uh, the uh, followers of Rupa Goswami or uh, Rupa Nugas. So that is because Mahaprabhu uh, gave all that that was within his heart to to Rupa Goswami, and he expressed everything. That is Sakshat Haritveda, Samastha Shastra, Uktas Tatha Bhav, Yata Eva Sadhvi, Kinto Prabhoya Priya Eva Tasya, Vande Guru Sri Charna Ravindam. So we take we took this opportunity to connect today's verse with Srila Rupa Goswami. We discussed last time also Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra that Gauruvani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sunyavadi Paschat Deshatarne Prabhupada is Sakshad Haritvena. Uh, as an adjective, he possesses all the qualities of Hari because of the mercy of Hari and Gauravani Pracharine. Bhakti Siddhan Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra also is the Namaste Gauravani Sri Murte Dinatarine Rupa Nuga Viruddha Apasiddhanta Dvanta Harine. Namaste. I offer my respectful obeisances to Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur, who is personified Gauravani. So that is Sakshad Haritvena. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur's Pranam Mantra also in that Nama Bhakti Vinodaya Satchitananda Namine Gaur Shakti Swarupaya. He is the embodiment or the Swarup of Gaur Shakti. Uh, so that's what uh, Sakshad Haritvena means. So, and then that is one of the reasons why Prabhupada is also called as the Shakta Avesha Avatar. Means one who has been permeated with the uh, Shakti or the power, the spiritual power of Hari, of Krishna. Similarly, even Srila Bhakti Thakur, Srila Bhakti Siddhasvati Thakur and Prabhupada uh, in following their footsteps had declared when he met so many different uh, Christians in all the parts of the world and he had conversations with bishops and the Archbishop of Can Canterbury in UK and many different uh, personalities of churches, advanced uh, so-called leaders of the different churches, he used to say, yes, our Guru Maharaj and our Parampara Acharyas used to say that Jesus Christ is a Vaishnava and he is a Shaktyavesh Avatar because what he did, he preached the basics of Bhakti to everyone. And, but unfortunately, as a side note, uh, Bhakti Siddhan Prabhupada said that to one Professor Sathars in 1922, there's a very nice conversation between Professor Sathars of the Ohio State University. This is in the 1920s when he, visit, when he was in Calcutta throwing the East India Company, the total complete British Raj of, uh, of the British was, was in full fledged, in full swing at that time. So he was a visiting professor from, from the United States. So he was a professor of theology and uh, he uh, met Srila Bhakti Siddhartha Saraswati Prabhupada in, in Calcutta. So in that there was a nice conversation. Uh, we had the opportunity to read the excerpts from that uh, conversation. And in that Bhakti Siddhartha Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada talks about Jesus Christ. And I still remember some of the sentences, the noble Jesus, this is how Srila Bhakti Siddhartha Saraswati Prabhupada addresses Jesus. The noble Jesus, uh, with a lot of respect, he says, is beyond, uh, the Gaudiya Vaishnavism is beyond the morality of what the noble Jesus preached. <laughs> beyond the morality of what the noble Jesus preached. We are better Christians, the Vaishnavas, the, the true Vaishnavas are better Christians than the present Christians. And because uh, uh, Jesus Christ, even Prabhupada, time and again mentioned, that always he talked about uh, love of God. He, he used that word quite often. Uh, he did not use the word fear of God, love of God. And that is the main principle of Vaishnavism. And Jesus Christ also actually said that about 12 years he had disappeared after, uh, you know, in, in between, before he came back to the Mount of Olive. And he actually uh, delivered a lot of disciples and also the people who were hungry <clears throat> due to a very bad drought. At the Mount Olive, he actually rained mana. He did a miracle. And he rained some kind of a bread that was permeated with honey. So that the people on Mount Olive would not go hungry. Those, those are the people who had faith in him. So like that, he filled their bellies. He did not distribute any fish or anything like that. Jesus Christ was a pure vegetarian. And he actually disappeared. And it is even said that he came to Jagannath Puri, Lord Jesus Christ. So he understood 
very perfectly he himself how he could he not understand he was one of the son of gods but the christians they out of their uh, fanatical attitude and their immature understanding they have used the bible and jesus christ this one particular sentence saying i am uh, i and my father are one that is the particular uh, verse that they quote from the bible i and my father are one now <laughs> amazing see krishna some or the other is making me speak this particular verse from the bible connecting it to this verse number 7 now i and my father are one from the vaishnava perspective it means sakshat haritvena it means that i and my father are one means just like a pure acharya or a pure devotee are always one with krishna in thought mind and deed anukulena krishna anushilanam whatever the krishna wants chaitanya mano abhishtam sthapitam jena bhular bhutale that what rupa goswami what chaitanya mahaprabhu wanted uh, in his heart rupa goswami understood perfectly that is called oneness please try to understand this concept it is an amazing concept which even the mayavadis don't understand they say oneness with with the with the para brahman with the brahman oneness uh, advait they explain that oneness like that but we as vaishnavas use the word advait means we are non different in thought word and deed are baba whatever my krishna wants the gopis the manjris that gaudiya vaishnava bhav even the vaishnava standard vaishnava bhav whether one is a ramanuja <coughs> sri sampradaya or rudra sampradaya or any other sampradaya it doesn't matter a vaishnava is still a vaishnava very strong in the principle that my krishna my lord ramachandra should be pleased that is bhakti that is the foundation of bhakti so we are one in the sense that just like a father and son are one when there is a mature son uh, serving the father like i have given this example many times that a son now is grown up and he is ready to sit take the father seat in the in the business so when the son makes certain decisions then somebody approaches the father and says your son said the following uh, or or maybe the the chief uh, what do you call financial officer comes and tells the father that your son is saying like you know uh, can we invest uh, 2 million dollars in this project i just wanted to kind of you know approach you and before i i uh, kind of you know sign off on that check because i'm the, that's my responsibility as the chief financial officer so father will say whatever my son's decision is my decision so that is the meaning of what uh, what what the bible really means from the vaishnava perspective because bhakti vinod tagur shila bhakti siddhant sarasri tagur they had actually studied the bible they had understood the main principles of vaishnavism that they saw that they were there that is why they endorsed the true christianity as a very basic form of vaishnava so i and my father are one means means everything that my father wants i know just like the manjris radharani doesn't have to say anything automatically just by the time by looking at the expression on the face or even sometimes even without looking at the expression on the face immediately the manjris who are one with radha they understand now my radha needs this my radha ji needs this the radha sham sundar needs that that is what it means i and my father are one that is what it means as anukulina krishna anushilanam tad bhakti ruktam that is what uktam bhakti means that is what but the christians misunderstood that they say i i and my father one means i am god my father is god i am god but there is a true delineation jesus christ mentions there is another verse in the bible we were very fortunate when we are in the younger days when we were we were studied in a convent school in bombay and we were attracted to the bible itself and we actually read the entire bible of course i don't remember a lot of things but the key principle verses i still remember and i, I tried to connect them especially when i'm speaking to some western devotees and, and and i remember all these verses one of the verses being that krishna uh, that jesus christ is saying that um, i have many things yet to say but you do not have the ears that's one of the verses i forgot which book i think it is the book of john but don't quote me uh, but the essence of this verse is that that uh, that i have many things to say but you are not ready to hear it meaning this principle higher principles of vaishnavism and bhakti i have understood them because i am a vaishnava and you know by the mercy of my father you know i am a shaktavai sauta jesus christ himself is a shaktavai sauta so i understand all that but you are not ready yet 
it's just like somebody who has just joined this con and you know he's talking about bhagavad gita and if we make a statement that chaitanya mahaprabhu rejected bhagavad gita in his conversation with rai ramananda immediately the temple president or the other management will say baba this is your last lecture you cannot speak like that <laughs> because they themselves don't understand it and they don't themselves most of them do not go into this inner deeper meanings they don't read chaitanya charitamrita they don't understand the deeper nuances so that will be the first and last lecture of that person so you have to stick to this even many times when i have been speaking they i have been warned many times baba first thing you know please keep it very simple many people that tell me and sometimes you know for to me to keep it simple means i try to keep it as simple as as i can um, <clears throat> based on the true gaudiya principles so anyways uh, so i and my father are one there are many things that i have yet to say but you cannot hear uh, even that principle of the of the, of, uh, of the bible especially in the last uh, few minutes of, of jesus christ when he was on the cross he says my dear father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing so the principle of forgiveness is there which is of course a vaishnava principle but there is even a deeper meaning the meaning of bhagavad gita comes in the father forgive them because they are thinking that they are destroying this body by nailing me to the cross but i am not this body i am a spirit soul so forgive them for their ignorance <laughs> that is vaishnava principle another verse that comes to my mind from the bible is in the beginning when jesus christ came to the sea of galilee at that time jesus when he sees on the sea shore on the in the sea of galilee he sees the fishermen casting their nets into the ocean to catch some fish so so jesus says cast aside thy nets and i will make you a fisherman of men how beautiful that is a vishnu principle chaitanya mahaprabhu's principle what is that principle amar agya taro ei desh jara dekho tare kaho krishna updesh <laughs> Hari Paul, what Jesus Christ as a Vaishnava leader he is saying as an Acharya that cast these nets away in poetical form he is saying and stop catching fish I will make you a fisherman of men so I will make you my disciples I will teach you the principles of foundation of bhakti and then you can go out and preach to the men and I will make you a fisherman of men meaning those who are true pracharaks huh? they convert the hearts they catch them are baba come come take that prabhupad used to stand under the tomkin square park tree and chant or a krishna or a krishna 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 or a hare hare ramo or a ramo ram ramo or a hare all those hippies who are dancing in doing their maruana and their lsd and they were all in the park somebody brought their guitar somebody brought their bongos and an ac bhakti sami only had a pair of kartals no mrudang no vedic instruments and they simply propad used to call them come come and he was a fisherman of men he caught all these people this hippies he converted them into happies by making them vaishnavas and and that's how the hari krishna explosion happened he gave them he empowered them He sent Gurudas. He sent Malti. He sent Shansundar. The two couples went to to UK from the US, and they spread the movement in UK. Shansundar, he was the one responsible for uh, catching hold of uh, the uh, what is those famous uh, uh, Beatles, uh, George Harrison, and uh, uh, I forget the other name of the Beatle, uh, and and they they. caught hold of this mahamantra nicely and they recorded the famous apple studios and they recorded uh, and, and 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 there's a nice song by george harrison that explains the vaishnava principles oh my lord sweet dear lord which he, which he, which was composed and that had become a big hit uh, for the fans of the beatles so that is because of the mercy of 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 uh, shri prabhupa sitting in the us he had just empowered you go and these couples went on the streets of london with some kartal one mrudang two couples husband and wife two couples they went and they chanted and then broke when when the lot of devotees were were already ready for initiation and further uh what we call as bhajan kriya prabhupad went there and then then the temple started and and even so that even that uh, george harrison donated uh, his uh, 
has mentioned. Today it is called the Bhakti Vedant Manor, where Radha Gokula Ananda's temple is there. Very beautiful place, the Manor. If you ever get a chance to go to London, please go. It is the about an hour outside London city. And I think the station, I've been there a few times, it's the Radlett station. You can take a train from London city. So if, if any chance happens, it's a beautiful place. Uh, it's called the Bhakti Vedanta Manor. And Srila Prabhupada stayed in that house, in that manor and that was donated by George Harrison. And there's a nice little museum there. Prabhupada's house is maintained, just like how it is maintained in Mayapur, how it is maintained in, in Vrindavan. It's a Tirtha. So I will make you a fisherman of men. And today, you know, by his mercy, you know, Prabhupada's mercy and through his sincere followers, you know, we all can. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instructions was what exactly uh, Jesus Christ followed. And then he made his the 12 chief disciples of, of Jesus Christ were there. And that is why the Bible is nothing but a, a compilation of each disciples, what they heard from Jesus Christ. So John was one of his disciples. It was called the book of John. So that's a part or a chapter of the Bible. Then that was the book of book of Paul. Like that, it was named after the, the, each disciple. And the Bible is all those. That it's like the Upanishads. The, 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 that Vyasdev, he spoke and his disciples simply heard. And then they wrote down the Upanishads. Vyasdev actually didn't write them. It is his disciples who wrote the Upanishads after hearing. Upa means near. Upanishad means to, Nishad means to, to sit near the Guru. Upanishad. That's what the word Upanishad in Sanskrit means. So basically the Bible is a compilation of all the 12 disciples who heard the instructions of Jesus Christ. And that is how. So true Christians, they never eat meat. And even the wine that they're talking about, wine is basically, uh, the, the, they call it, uh, the, the, the grape juice is called wine, actually. It is not the fermented grape juice which today they unfortunately due to sense gratification, even the priests in the church, etc., even in their communion, etc., they offer wine, the red wine especially, because it is the blood of Christ and Jesus Christ sacrificed our life for us and only one who believes in him will be delivered. Why? The question that arises that Professor Sutters and they had when Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur had a discussion is how come uh, if us ordinary people can have three, four, five, even our grandfathers at that time used to have 11, 12, 15 children. Huh? An ordinary man can have that many children, then why can God not have more than one son? So how is God limited to only one son? So like that, these presentations were made. And when Professor Sattas heard all these wonderful arguments at the end, he told Bhakti Siddha Saraswati Prabhupada. And then he went into some deeper uh, discussions of Vaishnavism. He said, he actually said, what I've just heard from you, you know, it is it is going to take a long time for me to digest. Because he had never heard this kind of description in, of theism, although being a big professor of theism. So, actually speaking, Rupa Goswami and our Acharyas are the topmost professors of theism. Even within, you know, even beyond Vyasdev. Even beyond what Vyasdev has presented in the Vedas. I can, I can very safely conclude and very safely say this, that they are indeed uh, the topmost professors of theism. So this is our uh, Rupa Goswami, this is the Sakshat Haritvena Samastha Shastri, Uktas Tatha Bhav Yata Eva Sadhvi, Kinto Prabhoya Priya Vate Sadhvi, very, very dear to Krishna, very dear, Rupa Goswami, very dear to, uh, to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That is why he allowed, okay, Baba, you want to describe me in Radha Bhav, go ahead. Okay, you want to write these books of Rasa? Go ahead. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave him for very dear. Kinto Prabhu. Ya Priya Vatase, you are so dear. Vande Guru Sri Why are you so dear? Because you are very dear to my Radha. <laughs> Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale. In Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra. In Bhakti Siddhan Sarasit Thakur's Pranam Mantra. Very dear to Krishna. Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale. He descended from the spiritual sky in Golok because he was very, very praised to Krishna. Same thing, it is being said in this verse 7 that Sakshadaritvena Samastha Shastra Uktas Tatha Bhav Yata Eva Sadhvi Kinto Prabhoya Priya Eva Tasya. Same thing as Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale. Priya Eva Tasya Vande Guru Sri Charnaravindam to these great 
personalities to these guru hosts, plural again, to Srila Prabhupada, to Bhakti Siddhanta Sri Thakur Prabhupada, to Gaur Kishwazi Mahaji Maharaj, to Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, to all these Manjiri Gana, I offer my respectful obeisances. That is the deep meaning of this verse. Shakshat Haritvena Samastha Shastra Uktastatha Bhav Yataiva Sadhvi Kinto Prabhoya Priya Vatasya Vande Guru Shri Chitnaya There are also many other Shastri verses that that kind of uh, um, uh, are parallel to this, this uh, verse of uh, Shakshat Haritvena which if necessary and if devotees want I can present those and make it one more session of this a seventh verse before I move into the eighth verse. So you can uh, let me know uh, because we have already spoken three sessions on this Sakshat Haritvena. And of course, we dedicated uh, and connected this verse to Srila Rupa Goswami um, being his uh, Tirobhav yesterday. So Srila Rupa Goswami Pad ki jai, Ananta Koti Vaishnavindu ki jai, Srila Prabhupada is Divine Krishna Prabhupada, Shabhakti Siddhartha Thakur. Ananta Koti Vaishnav Vindavya Gaur Prima Bande Hari Hari Gaur Pancha Galpatar Vogascha Kripa Sindhubya Evacha Patita Nam Pavanevya Vaishnav Evacha